I mean, this is such a crazy evolutionary thing where your body said, hey, you're either running from a tiger or you're reproducing, but you're not doing both at the same time. And it makes sense because the body said, I'm going to start making all this cortisol and all this adrenaline so that you can run from the tiger, but not stop to say, oh, well, first I got to, you know, take care of some business. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if it wasn't for this fight or flight response, as humans, we would have never made it out of the savanna. Hey, welcome back to the Holistic Nootropics YouTube channel where we talk about using nootropics, nutrition, and biohacking to help you hack the power of your brain. My name's Eric, the Holistic A-Hole. In this video, I'm talking all about the pregnenolone steel and how you can use nootropics, nutrition, and biohacking to avoid succumbing to the pregnenolone steel and build more beneficial hormones to really, truly thrive. The pregnenolone steel is crazy because your body is using pregnenolone to make either cortisol or these sex hormones like testosterone and estrogen. So the only way that your body knows which one to use is dictated by what's happening in your brain. So if you're in a constant stressed out state, your body's going to make cortisol and it's not going to make sex hormones. I mean, this makes sense because you can't be in a fight or flight situation, but then also get horny. You're going to be one or the other. Like if you're in the middle of an earthquake, you're not also going to want to start having sex. It's really hard to get a hard on if you're getting chased by someone with a knife. This is important because for a man, having enough testosterone is really what leads a man to thrive. It helps with mood. It helps with focus. It helps with strength. It helps with vitality. It helps with just overall motivation in life. It also helps with things like sleep. So having enough testosterone for a man is absolutely vital to living a happy life. And for a woman, the same is true of estrogen. Estrogen is an essential hormone a woman needs enough of to really truly feel like the person she wants to feel like. It helps with mood. It helps with your vitality. It helps with every part of being a woman. But a woman also needs some testosterone. So for a woman, it's about balance with these hormones. The thing about the pregnenolone steel is that the body prioritizes making these stress hormones at the expense of the sex hormones. So when the body goes into a stressful state, like a fight or flight state, the HPA axis fires up the communication signals that tell the body, specifically your adrenal glands, to start producing cortisol, epinephrine, norepinephrine. Because testosterone and estrogen both use pregnenolone to essentially build the pathway to make those hormones, the body instead uses the pregnenolone to make cortisol. And when the pregnenolone is used to make cortisol, now you can't make the sex hormones. So this is why you can't be both making sex hormones and stress hormones at the same time. When you're stressed out, especially when you're chronically stressed out, you're typically not thriving. You're typically going to be low in testosterone and estrogen. This eventually leads to chronic conditions like depression, anxiety, PTSD, mood, just overall general mood issues, lack of focus, low brain processing speed, brain fog. So essentially what you have to do is you have to program your body to get out of this fight or flight state so it's not using pregnenolone, this base cholesterol derivative, to make cortisol. It has to instead make the beneficial sex hormones. Essentially what you need to do is you need to calm your HPA axis. This is your hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. This is the stress superhighway that essentially communicates from your brain to your adrenal glands to start shooting out cortisol and stress hormones. When you're able to get out of this state, which we know as fight or flight, you can start instead having your body live in a rest and digest parasympathetic state and you'll start making the beneficial hormones. This of course is easier said than done, but it's highly possible. I mean, really the first thing you want to do is you want to start with lifestyle factors. You want to start incorporating more stress reducing activities in your life. You want to start doing things like meditation, exercise, regular communication with loved ones, be around loved ones, working out. You really more than anything else want to incorporate a healthy whole foods based diet. You want to get away from ingredients in food that can fire up your HPA axis. You want to get away from these ingredients that make your body stressed. 
you're going to find a lot of these ingredients in heavily processed foods. You're going to find them in box foods. A lot of these ingredients are like the seed oils and vegetable oils that are found in a lot of potato chips, in a lot of box food items, in a lot of heavily processed foods, in fried foods. You want to get away from things like high fructose corn syrup and refined sugar and all of the sugar substitutes that you find in all these different foods. Essentially, you want to avoid the middle of the grocery store. You want to avoid fast food. You want to avoid colas. You want to avoid cigarettes. You want to avoid alcohol. All of these are going to stress your body out and continue that path in this fight or flight state, which is going to continue making cortisol, which is going to, again, lower your sex hormones like testosterone and estrogen. These foods, again, will keep you in this stressed out state because your body requires a lot of energy and a lot of extra assistance and a lot of extra cortisol to process these foods and to clear them out of your system. One of the biggest instigators of a stress response is actually mold. Mold is becoming more and more prevalent in homes and cars and just general materials that people work with all around the world. You're going to find mold, in, especially in a lot of foods like peanuts and coffee and a lot of fruits and vegetables. That's not to say you shouldn't eat or drink those things, but just be mindful that mold can be found very commonly and very easily in these items. I actually have several podcasts all about the dangers of mold and how it truly stresses your body out. You can check out those links in the description below. Now, supplement-wise, there are some really great supplements and nootropics that can do a, a, a fantastic job of calming your nervous system down and helping you to get out of this fight-or-flight state. Some of the most common supplements people take for stress response are adaptogenic herbs. So these are things like ashwagandha, rhodiola, schisandra, tulsi, bacopa monnieri. It's just important to know that with herbs like this, they're very individual, and they, while they do calm the HPA axis, they do have very specific actions, and some people do better on certain herbs than others. A lot of it has to do with your own specific constitution, so it's really best to experiment. Try rhodiola for a little bit, see how it works for you. Try ashwagandha for a little bit, see how it works with you. Specifically, ashwagandha has a testosterone-boosting effect. This has been shown in a number of different clinical studies, so... Maybe ashwagandha is a good one to start with there, but that can be a little bit too calming for some people, while rhodiola can be a little bit more excitatory. So again, try to see which one works best for you. There's also some amino acid nootropics that are really good for calming the nervous system. These would be things like taurine, L-theanine, and L-carnitine. Each one of these has a specific action in calming the body down. Magnesium is probably one of the best supplements that you can take for calming the adrenal response. The adrenal glands use magnesium, and typically people who are very chronically stressed out are deficient in magnesium. Now, most people are deficient in magnesium because this is a uh, mineral that is very rarely found in food anymore because of the issue of soil depletion, but Magnesium supplements are, for the most part, safe and very effective at calming the body down. You can check out my full review of magnesium and finding the right kind of magnesium for you at the article in the link in the description below. I would also recommend something like phosphatidylserine because phosphatidylserine actually has a specific action on the HPA axis. It actually is able to calm your hypothalamus pituitary connection so that it emits less of the adrenal corticotropin hormone that stimulates the adrenal response. And the last nootropic I'll talk about is melatonin. Cortisol and melatonin specifically antagonize each other, and they work within your circadian rhythm. So cortisol isn't bad so long as you're getting most of it in the morning and then allowing it to taper off through the day. Later on at night, melatonin starts to shoot up. So if you notice that you have this issue where you have a hard time falling asleep and you wake up in the morning tired, the problem might be that your cortisol is dysregulated and you might not be making enough melatonin. So trying a melatonin supplement at night could be very helpful for your sleep patterns, which could reset your circadian rhythm, which will help regulate your cortisol patterns. Now getting away from the nootropics into the more biohacking stuff, something that I really like for calming the nervous system is the Apollo wearable because the Apollo boosts your heart rate variability and your heart rate variability 
is a metric of your parasympathetic nervous system. Again, the parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system antagonize each other, one or the other. So when you're in parasympathetic, you're actually able to lower your stress response and make more of these beneficial hormones like testosterone, estrogen. So the Apollo wearable delivers low frequency vibration. And by doing this, it can actually stimulate your parasympathetic nervous system, and it's going to actually raise your heart rate variability. I've measured my own response with this on my Aura Ring, and I have noticed after even just a little bit of use, the Apollo wearable is very effective when worn at the right times of day and worn consistently to raise your heart rate variability. In fact, I have a full review of the Apollo wearable. You can check that out at the link in the description below. Now, without trivializing how complex the endocrine system is, it's just important to start implementing these practices throughout the day and in your life because getting out of this stressful state is going to help you not just lower stress, but of course, increasing your overall beneficial hormone output. And by doing that, you can boost your mood, you can boost your focus, you can boost your productivity, you can really just boost your overall quality of life, which is the goal of many of these nootropics to begin with. But I'd love to know what you think. Let me know in the comments if you deal with excessive stress, if you have noticed a dip in your testosterone or estrogen. Have you tried any of these things that I mentioned in the video? Let me know what you do for stress and how you get out of succumbing to the pregnenolone steel. And for more information on all things nootropics, biohacking, and nutrition, be sure to check out holisticnootropics.com. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'll catch you on the next video.